morning. Welcome to March 19th, regular board meeting of the Omaha Public Power District. We can please have roll call. Mrs. Tracy. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Here. Gay? Here. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Here. Ulrich? Here. Agenda item number two, notice of the time and place of this meeting was publicized by notifying the area news media, by publicizing same in the Omaha World Herald and outlets, by displaying such notice on the arcade level of Energy Plaza since March 13, 2015, and by mailing such notice to each of the district's directors on that same date. <coughs> A copy of the proposed agenda for this meeting has been maintained on a current basis and is readily available for public inspection in the office of the district's corporate secretary. Additionally, a copy of the open meetings law is available for inspection in the public meeting book located in this meeting room. Agenda item number three, approval of the January 2015 Comprehensive Financial and Operating Report, the January 29, 2015 Special Board Meeting Minutes, the February 12, 2015 Board Meeting Minutes, the March 8th and March 9th, 2015 CEO Interview and Public Forum mi Minutes, and the March 19, 2015 Board Meeting Agenda. Okay, do we have a motion? Second. second. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. All right. Yes. Motion passed. <laughs> Agenda item number four, persons wishing to address the Board of Directors on a particular item are asked to approach the microphone as that agenda item is discussed. Comments will be heard following board discussion of an item and prior to a vote by the board. Persons wishing to address the board on all other matters will have an opportunity before the close of the meeting. Agenda item number five, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District as follows. Number one, that the engineer's certificate requesting that the board waive the sealed bid requirements in accordance with the Nebraska Revised <coughs> Statute, Section 70-637, is hereby approved. Number two, that management is hereby authorized and directed to negotiate a contract or contracts for managed task and supplemental craft labor services at OPPD generating stations for three years beginning in July 2015, with the option to renew the contract for up to five additional one-year terms, subject to review and approval of the final contract documents by the district. General Counsel. Number three, that the notice required by Nebraska Revised Statute Section 70 637 shall be published in the Omaha World Herald. Motion? So I have a second. Second. <clears throat> Mr. Barrett. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Chair McGuire. Uh, this is for the maintenance and modification services of OPPD's generating stations, and I'm going to turn it over to John Hansen to explain. Um, Okay. Thank you, Director Barrett. This is uh, a contract that we are asking to go out and negotiate uh, with vendors uh, for supplemental labor uh, to perform throughout the year, mainly for outage situations and uh, special modifications and maintenance. Uh, and so we staff uh, for a normalized uh, throughout the year, but uh, we have certain peaks, especially during outages, where we bring on supplemental labor to address the, uh, the workload. And, uh, uh, and so this is what uh, we would be negotiating and, and uh, discussing with the different vendors uh, for a three-year base contract. And then as uh, uh, was mentioned, for five additional years on a yearly uh, option to re-up the contract. Okay, so this is just the beginning approval. This isn't um, this the, is, the contract itself. That's correct. This is just approval to go out and negotiate the contract. We will come back to the board uh, when we have uh, a recommendation with uh, an estimated amount for that three-year. Okay. Um, and who's the current holder of this? Kiwit. Okay. And about 75% of this work is going to be probably up at uh, Fort Calhoun, is that correct? That is correct. And the rest will be with the other fossil plants and the other generating That plants. is correct, yes. Okay. It's a fairly large contract. It's a large contract. The last three years, uh, <clears throat> initial estimate was at six, uh, about $64 million. Uh, we came to the board last month and had to up that uh, amount by $18 million. So total, grand total in the range of uh, $83, $84 million. And whoever you choose has to be able to uh, work in, in, within the nuclear plant. and everything. That is so correct. Increase security and everything else. Yes, that's, that's probably the emphasis of that's this the contract. That's on it, yes. yes. 
I do notice in the notes, I apologize for not being there Tuesday, Madam Chair. We're glad you weren't. Yeah, I was sick as I was. You didn't want any part of me. I'm still not sounding good, but I feel better. Uh, John, I noticed in the notes here that we have the capacity to have a separate contract for the nuclear and a separate one for the fossil fuels. Have we ever had that option before? And if so, have we ever done it that way? We have not done it that way in the past, but it's it's something we thought we would at least consider Explore. as an option. But yes. It's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Might decrease our cost a little bit. On the fossil yeah. side. On the fossil side. Mm -hmm. We have any other questions from our board members? If not, do we have any uh, comments or concerns from the public? <clears throat> do we have roll call, Mrs. Tracy? Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Motion passed. Agenda item number six, resolution number 6049. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power <laughs> District that the proposal of Boiler Tube Company of America in the amount of $1,334,150 to provide the design and supply of materials for the NC1 Boiler Upper Economizer Lower Bank is the lowest and best bid received on request for proposal number 4553 and is hereby accepted and the bond of such bidder is hereby approved. Second. Mr. Barrett. Uh, thank you, Chairperson McGuire. Uh, this is for the replacement of the Nebraska City Unit 1 Upper Economizer replacement, and I'm going to go to John Hansen for another description of the economizer. Thank you, Director Barrett. This is to supply material for, again, the lower bank of the upper economizer. So there is an upper and a lower economizer. <coughs> and in the upper economizer, there are two banks. The upper bank was replaced, I believe, back in the 90s. The lower bank is original <laughs> equipment supplied by Foster Wheeler in 1979. And we have had experienced some failures uh, due to fatigue and also some manufacturing defects uh, in the past recent years. And uh, so to maintain reliability, we believe it's in the best interest of uh, the station and the district to replace this section of tubing. So we did go out for bids. We received five bids. Uh, two came in late, so three bids were considered. And uh, from that, uh, uh, Boiler Tube of America, which is located in South Carolina, provided the best bid in the amount of uh, $1,334,150. The engineer's estimate was uh, $1.3 million. And this will be done in uh, uh, the fall of 2000, or excuse me, the spring of 2016 during a scheduled outage. Uh, John, and uh, these are just for the, for the parts to do the work? That's correct. Design and supply of the material. Okay. And how about who's going to do the work? We'll, uh, we'll go out and uh, request <laughs> proposals for that, and we'll come back to the board okay. with a recommendation. question uh, I know we discuss all these on our Tuesday committee meetings and our public meetings so that's why there's not a lot of questions here mm -hmm. today on these and you do a fine job explaining question. what it is the question is when you go to our website can you still click can you click on this stuff and read all these things okay yes. I just wanted to get that yes. out there because if you look at it, we're you making can, a yeah. bunch of big decisions and if anyone wants to see the reasons yeah. why click on the website now we never had that before and you can read all these detailed there, reports, yeah. so it's been on there a while. I know, but including any slides. Sometimes when you spend, you know, yeah, this kind of money, this quick. really interesting slides. We have I don't discussed know if this we have very much. We have a bunch of engineering yeah. lessons here now, yeah. but yeah. 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 and I'd be glad to answer any questions yeah. on that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my one question is that it increases reliability. What does it do with the capacity? Uh, does it maintain the capacity or does it increase the capacity of the unit? The materials are like kind, so it's it's basically a one-for-one -one replacement. So we don't anticipate or it, it is not designed to increase the output of the okay. of the unit. Okay. Oh, I, I've got one. So this is a, this 30 years, this thing, <coughs> 30 years prior to being replaced, this. How long it's been in operation? Yeah. Since 1979. 79, yeah. yeah. Do we have any other questions from the board? If not, do we have any comments or questions from the audience? Do we have a vote, Mrs. Tracy? Barrett? Yes. Kevin? Uh, yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Curly? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Motion passed. Good stuff.
item. Agenda item number seven, resolution number 6050. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that management is authorized and directed to sell one parcel of property located north of Spring Creek Addition between 25th Street and Kennedy Freeway in Omaha, Nebraska, as generally described on the attached map at the appraised value of $45,000. So moved. Number seven. Second. Mr. Barrett. I think that's why I'm down. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chairperson McGuire, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mo Dogman to describe this piece of property. Thank you, Director Barrett. Uh, yeah, this is for the sale of uh, surplus property, and typically what we do uh, when we develop a long-term strategic plan and figure out where we need to build substations, uh, transmission lines, and even distribution lines, to have that capacity to be able to serve our customers and to continue to have that high uh, reliability. Now, as we go through the process, after years and years, uh, we determine that some property are, not, uh, are no longer needed, and this is one of them. Uh, uh, what we also did is uh, we had an independent appraiser come up with a, a market value of this property uh, at $45,000. And uh, once you approve, or if you approve, We'll advertise this in the paper and take uh, bids and offers for about two weeks. And we will also uh, contact the adjacent landowners to make sure that they're aware in case they're, they're interested uh, themselves. Uh, once we have these offers, if we have uh, uh, one offer or, or more, above 90% of the value will go ahead and, and proceed uh, with the sale. If we don't, then we'll come back to the board and ask for permission to sell it for uh, less than 90% of the value. And the land is about a little over six uh, acres. And we'll still uh, make sure that we have an easement reserved for our transmission and distribution. Great point. Uh, we will maintain uh, uh, rights for easement so we can uh, do any, any work or any maintenance uh, on, uh, on the transmission line that we have there now. Um, Mo, and is this in Sarpy County? Uh, no. The, the map right there shows uh, the exact location. Okay. Uh, of, it looks uh, like Kennedy piece. Expressway. Uh, Cornhusker Road? Correct. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in Sarpy County. It's got to be. Okay. Um, and is it zoned for residential, industrial, or is there any just excess? I do not have that information. Uh, I can get that for you for sure. But okay. Yeah, it's... Just so you know, it's kind of in a down by this flood plain that Happy Oak Creek is around there, so I don't know how great a property this would yeah, be. Yeah, it's going to be interesting um, to get it. 25th and Cornhusker. Actually, we, we, we believe one of the adjacent uh, landowners might be interested in it. We have one person, yeah, probably that. We, yeah. That's, that yeah, we believe yeah. so. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you, Mo. Sure. The question is, what about the public? Any concerns or questions from the public? Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Motion passed. Agenda item number eight, resolution number 6051. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District hereby appoints Timothy J. Burke as Chief Operating Officer of the District, effective March 19, 2015, and President and Chief Executive Officer of the District, effective May 10, 2015, at the, sal at the salary set forth on Exhibit A hereto. So moved. Second. Second. Well, it's been, a, it's been a long process. Um, in, in addition to having the assistance of consultants, uh, I, I, I want to publicly thank the number of employees within OPPD that have been in this process. It's been, a, it's been a, again, a long process, and your help has been invaluable during the, during the, uh, during the, uh, the screening and interviews and so forth. We had several great candidates. All could have done a, a fine job leading this organization. We are confident Tim Burke is the right choice to lead OPPD into the future, and we recommend his approval. Good. Other comments? I wasn't there Tuesday, as I previously said, so I'd like to add my input uh, as I expressed to each of you individually that I, uh, it was a very tough decision, especially the two eternal candidates. And a very, very tough decision. But I think going forward, this is the right choice, and I fully support this uh, resolution. Okay. Yeah. Any comments? And, and I'd echo what Fred's saying, but also I did, um, I got to say, the public process 
I think was very good. It showed the quality of the candidates. Everyone could see, um, you know, Tim did an outstanding job and will be a, a great leader. But I, I would say the public process was very helpful. And another thing that I noticed too was we're we're really on the right track on a lot of things here. Uh, as you heard other candidates, what they wanted to propose, we're doing a lot of great things. We have great internal people. Um, it is a very difficult choice, but uh, I think Tim would, will do a great job. Uh, speaking on St. Patrick's Day week uh, and being seven eighths Irish, um, I am so proud of Tim uh, to be the next director. Uh, he is a he's a hard worker. He's he is um, when uh, Tim speaks, it's he he speaks from authority and knowledge, and I'm just impressed by his his just the ability to get the job done, and that. On the other token of that is he sees things in the future that a lot of people don't, and he's uh, he's just he, he sees things and he moves on them, and that's what impresses me the most. And I think uh, his his uh, contacts and the way that he works with the uh, with the metro community is phenomenal, and um, I I wish him the best, and uh, it's going to be a great however long he's here. It's going to be an exciting time. So thank you for stepping up. As someone who's a hundred percent Irish and the son of a <laughs> has nothing to do with anything. Let's get out. Let's get out the chart. But uh, uh, this is probably one. Of, this is, according to statute, the most important responsibility we have as a board, and that is to select the next CEO. Because from that decision flows all the other decisions as to uh, what we're going to build, what we aren't going to build, how we're going to handle run the, the, this business that is owned by each and every one of you. It was handled in that tone all the way through. Uh, there was a, uh, a slight glitch in there. And both interviewing the two gentlemen who asked not to have their names brought forward, and in the second time with the two gentlemen who had no problem with it, we were able to get a certain uh, knowledge of how things are done in other parts of the country, in other types of utilities, uh, both private and public. As we went through this process, <coughs> even having had gone through it both internally and externally, the two internal candidates always were at the top. And that's not just a reflection on them. It's a reflection on the utility and how people are trained and brought up through the utility. Because each one of those two had a significant period of time of growing within their positions and growing within their responsibilities and being added to other responsibilities. It was a truly difficult decision with two really great people. But the decision is that uh, Tim Burke is the right person for this job at this time. And we are all congratulating him and supporting him and wish him nothing but the best. When I was running for this job uh, a short time ago, I had no idea what I was getting into when it came to uh, <laughs> the CEO. I'm sure uh, that. I, I didn't. I also didn't realize that uh, Irish was a requirement. <laughs> I, 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 I am Irish, Hurley is Irish, and I, I don't know whether I can one-up any of these people or not, but my wife's maiden name was Flynn, so <laughs> you know, that should carry some weight. But uh, I have to reiterate everything that was said. Both, uh, all of the candidates were good, both the internal <laughs> candidates were outstanding, and it was a difficult <coughs> decision. Uh, and I think, like all of the board, I wish Tim all the all the best in the future. As the only check on the board, <laughs> proud check, I might add. Tim, congratulations, um, and uh, we we really do look forward to your leadership, and and you'll do a great job. I'd really like to thank Gary Gates in this process as well. Gary has been patient with us. Gary planned to retire. Did Gary wanted to be gone? And we have held on to him as long as possible. He's agreed to stick with us. 
get Tim acclimated, introduced to the, uh, the community nationwide. And uh, I really do appreciate his, his commitment to OPPD, uh, his tenure at OPPD, and Gary, you're one of the reasons we are among the top public power districts in the entire country. Thank you. Well, thank you. Everyone sort of has voiced my uh, feelings also, and I think we do have the right leader who can uh, give us the uh, strategic direction and also help us with his leadership skills to get us where we need to go. Uh, I do want to do a little bit of business for everyone. Um, I'm going to put some numbers out there. Uh, Mr. Burks uh, is going to have so like a bump in salary. Um, Mr. Uh, Gates will um, this his CEO selection uh, is your is is effective May 10th, 2015. Uh, during that time, the proposed salary between today and May 10th is uh, 419,217 dollars. And that is at 30.4% of the midpoint. Uh, effective May 10th, uh, Mr. Burke's salary will be 419,000. Uh, excuse me, will be 481,829,000 dollars, which is 34% uh, of the midpoint. So uh, we're getting a good deal here, by the way. He's only at 34% of the midpoint. So uh, thank you, Mr. Burke, and we appreciate that. I also want to introduce. Um, Tim's family, who's here? Terry is right there. And then we also have uh, Matt and Rachel and their son. Oh, Matt and Rachel and Nolan are gone, <laughs> running outside. It's, Nolan is a year and a half, and he's, he's running around. But they were here earlier. And then also Pat and Jordan are here. So congratulations to you. And we also, I know you're very proud of Tim, as we are. OK, now, are there, we'd like to have any comments from the public. If anyone would like to say anything. Yeah. I'm not sure what category Mr. I fit Gates. in right now. Looking forward to uh, transitioning to Tim. Uh, the candidates were an outstanding selection. I'd like to commend the board on the process. Uh, it was also a, a long one to stick through, but uh, as, as has been said, it is one of the most important decisions uh, going forward. Uh, look forward to the future uh, of this company and this corporation. Obviously, uh, it's been a big part of uh, my family's life as well uh, going forward. And I congratulate the candidates, uh, both of them, but also the whole senior team and all the folks out there that are OPPD's team. Uh, there's 2,300 of them that uh, work very, very hard every day and night, 24 hours a day, 365 a year, to put our product into the homes and the businesses. And uh, as I said before, you know, part of the magic is when it gets bad weather or uh, power plants go down or you got to go to New York and try and refinance bonds, that's when they do their best. And they're going in when everybody else is going, going home. So I truly appreciate that. Uh, a little more to come in April, but uh, it'll be, it's uh, going to be a great future for our company. And I appreciate the board's diligence in going through this decision. Okay. If I think we're ready for a vote. I've got it. Oh, Mr. Picorni. <clears throat> uh, Jeffrey Picorni, 4969 South, 149 Court, Omaha. Um, talk to Mr. Burke first. We will never know, the public, the people that went to those meetings and interviews, if he is the best candidate because he was selected in private, in secret meetings. I applaud Mr. Barrett, Mr. Green, for trying to bring that process out so we could listen to it. But like I said, we will never know. Mr. Kavanaugh started a quagmire back in, well, I, the one date I've got is 7 18, 14 when the contract was signed with the Mykoff, the personnel firm. And that went on. And this is, this is not me speaking as a, as a uh, um, this is a fact. You guys did it in secret in the July meeting, the August meeting, September meeting. November, and, uh, October, and December. It didn't become public until December, and then it was sprang. If you just give me a second here, and then I'll let you ask me a question. But you sprang it on the public. And here again, Tim goes into this thing with this on his shoulders. He should go into it with clear, open, no secrets. And even then, if he, if he had a problem that you guys want to talk about, or any of the other three candidates, you could have closed the meeting and said, hey, uh, Tim did this in grade school, or Mr. X did that in high school, or whatever. The minor possession on one of the candidates' appeal. But do that in closed session, and then come back out. I'm sure that you've got 100 things positive to talk about Mr. Burke and about um, Mo. 
I'm, I'm just sure there were 100 things, and I'm sure that you talked about those in your meetings, and those are the kind of things that we should know. Uh, I'm only hoping that, that this is the best decision that you, that you made. Um, it, it really concerns me that you got from point A, which is July 19th, which is one date that I can hang my hat on, to today. I, I don't know what happened in all those secret meetings. And there were not just one, not just two. There were 15 or 20. There were all kinds. And one of the directors is shaking his head. But it, it's a fact, in your meetings, in your meeting minutes, it says governance committee, succession. I've never, ever seen a body go into secret session to talk about who they're going to hire next. It just, it just isn't done. You'd think you'd want that exposed to the light of of all the citizens. And the worst thing is that you might have a rate payer out here, a customer who's got a great idea that he could have suggested to you folks to make that process better, to make Tim a better president. Okay, Mr. Picorni, yeah. I think we've gotten your point. I, uh, I would like to say that this is now a moot point. We recognized I, you that taken we did not yet. follow the Open Records Act. We did at all times follow the Open Meetings Act. As a result of that, we did restart the entire process, and I think we did it the right way this time. And I think we also have sent a new uh, way for everyone to look at what open meetings would do. And if we've learned anything else, it's learned that we can be more comfortable talking about this in the open. We've gained something from <clears throat> this as a board, and that we can be more open and not necessarily follow strict rules of the... Um, the Open Meetings Act, and we can't even open more and more things. We went over and above as far as providing an open meeting and public forums in this last process. And this is what I'm proud about, and that's what I'm going to stick with. It. And I think we did definitely get the right candidate with this. And you had the opportunity to talk to Mr. Burke personally one-on-one -on -one in the public forum last week. And I know you were there. You were at all the open meetings, which we appreciated. So thank you very much. But I wasn't at the secret meetings. And, and I'll close with this. The one fact in this whole thing is that you have been, and I convicted, that the OPPD has been judged to be in at fault on the disclosure of those salaries of the four people that, that quit or resigned um, last year. That, that, to do with that, that was a thing that you resisted, and they had to sue you. The, the World Herald and the Press Association had to sue you to get that information, which should have been out in front. Now, on this one... Like I said, I think this board is a lot more comfortable with being more open with the public as a result of all this, and I appreciate your comments. I, the only thing is I'm saying is that it was secrecy from point one to, to, to the end, to the very day, and even how you got up with the resolution, how you came up with Tim's name. There's nothing in here. Did, was it magic? Did somebody said, well, well, here's the resolution. Somebody had to write this resolution. Somebody had to say it's Tim Burke. There's no vote. Yep, we have a governance committee, and Pardon? the governance committee is the one who came up with this past resolution. There was no vote yesterday. There was no vote, but the governance committee, we did not can't vote. We're vote. voting yeah. right now. There can't be a vote. After, after you secret vote. sessions, Winchester after secret, the, after secret the sessions, board. the law is quite clear that if a decision is going to be made on something, and this is the most important decision of the decade, maybe even of the last three or four decades, Tim's going to be faced with a changing energy picture that no other president's been faced with. Uh, okay. Mr. Pointy, you've had your three minutes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Call. Okay, you can sit down. I'm going to call the question. Barrett. Yes. Yes. Gay. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, now we're going to have uh, the state of the district. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Burke. Yeah. have the cake available. <laughs> I'm not going to let one person ruin your, <coughs> your day. I mean, we are very, very proud of you. This is a happy day for everyone, here, here. as far as the district and as far as the employees. And we're very, very happy to welcome you as the 12th CEO of the Omaha Public Power Thank District. You. And you're going to do a great job. Congratulations. Congratulations.
Terry, there's a communication I got 11 years ago you might want to share with Tim that you're president here at OPPD, but you're not at home. <laughs> she did share that this morning. That was very clear. <coughs> Thank you. I'll walk through the corporation as we normally do. In Nebraska City, Nebraska City 1 remained in service the entire month since we last met. It's been in continuous service for 215 days. Uh, that's about seven months of continuous service. Nebraska City 2 rejoined the fleet after an extensive uh, overhaul and maintenance and repair of the turbine rotor that we talked about before that had some uh, material that uh, peeled off of that rotor and we had to go through extensive repairs to get it fixed. That startup was successful and it's returned to full power operation. North Omaha is completing its uh, maintenance outages, getting ready for our summer loads. Uh, in addition to rotating through those, we've rotated the units on and off to follow load and prices uh, that are out there in the market. Just uh, some interesting metrics in 2000, so far in 2015, our, our preventive maintenance compliance in our fossil fleet is at 95%, and the emergent work packages are only at 11%. So it means we're doing the work we plan to do, and, and we haven't had things that needed to have an emergent work uh, come along. Our gas turbine fleet is again finishing up outages and, and major overhauls and getting ready for summer operation. And with regard to our renewables, uh, renewable energy contributed to 18.4% of OPPD's retail energy sales in February. The capacity factor primarily of our wind was 54.7%, which is very, very good. And for 2015 year to date, we've had 19.1% of our retail energy sales. Uh, keep in mind our goal is 10% by 2020. And the overall capacity factor is 55%. So well done in that. That was really a good job of the procurement of those and the operation of them. With regard to Fort Calhoun, it's operated 100% power since we last met. The real the focus of this station right now is to get ready for the refueling outage. That refueling outage will begin before the board meets again in April. April 11th, the refueling outage starts. It's scheduled for 45 days. We uh, have a schedule that produces a, an actual work time that's below that, so we anticipate meeting that 45-day uh, business plan schedule in there. And just to give a sense for how far we've, we plan ahead, for this outage in 2015, we've got 19 of our milestones that are currently active, and we've got one that we call under a recovery plan, getting ready for that April 11th start. But we've also started one milestone and design change freeze, <coughs> the scope freeze, for our 2016 refueling outage. So. We haven't begun the 2015 one, but the planning for 2016 is underway and meeting freeze dates for that. Uh, we do have a major meeting coming up with the NRC April 9th. It will be at the Thompson Alumni Center on the UNO campus beginning at 6 o'clock. Uh, that will be, a, I think, a very good meeting with uh, feedback from the NRC as well as a presentation by OPPD as well. But we'll, uh, we'll be talking through some good, significant feedback from that meeting. We've had a, a lot of inspections uh, since we met the last time. We had a, a problem identification resolution inspection, which I think had about 10 people there. We've had 24 people uh, that came in for a, a design basis reconstitution, or about 15 people, and we've got 24 people there now uh, doing another evaluation of the plant. So around 40 people have taken a look at the facility, and the results have been very positive. For all intents and purposes, we are now integrated with the Exelon model. We're 95% complete, so we are calling ourselves integrated, and we're not in that mid-stage anymore. So we are accountable to perform as an integrated facility with Exelon. Uh, that is done. Just on the people side, with regard to our engineering uh, function, we have a society of engineers here at OPPD that have no hosted a number of events during uh, the week of February 23rd, which is uh, Engineers Week. It's, uh, you know, it's a very popular week in the country. I, I think it follows right after accountants and the actuaries. <laughs> <laughs> Being an engineer, I can say that. Uh, but with the, uh, the organization, the society, is very, very active at OPPD and reaches out to many areas to encourage people to explore that level of education and participation as a career. We're involved in a, in a transmission project, which is not huge, like the 345 line going into Missouri I've reported on previously but yet very important, and uh, Mo has uh, been working that pretty hard. It's the Elkhorn River Valley Transmission Project, and that's a transmission line between OPPD and Fremont. And it's been ordered to be performed by the Southwest Power Pool, that uh, regional transmission group that we joined. It's 18 miles of 161 kV transmission lines from the substation and an additional three miles of 69 kV, as well as some new auto transformers along the way. 
We anticipate that it'll be completed in 2019. The process we're in right now is determining the line route, and that'll involve a significant amount of public involvement. Meetings are underway with local leaders and the public to get stakeholder approval and input on that. So, Mick, that'll be up in, the, in your district as well, and we'll keep the whole board informed of that. It's a big activity for us. Finance continues to do extremely well in our refinancing. Due to the favorable interest rates, uh, we sold 94 million of 2015 Series C electric revenue bonds on February 12th, 2015. It refunded a portion of our 2007 bonds because their interest rates were better at a $7.5 million saving. That's approximately 7.7%. Just as a little bit of a summary, since June of 2014, uh, the board authorized the management team to refinance if we needed to or issue up to over $1 billion in bonds. We have refunded a significant portion of that, $710 million and $120 million of separate system revenue bonds. The total uh, savings is approximately $64 million over the next 28 years and uh, $15 million on the separate system bonds. So significant input for our customer owners and well done by the finance group. That takes a lot of work to do from the whole team. Uh, all 2,300 in a way contribute to that. With regard to our customers, it's been a big outreach month. We're tremendously involved in the community and I'm very proud of what the men and women at OPPD do in that area. On Saturday, March 7th, we had the eighth annual Heat the Streets and Walk for Warmth was held at Midtown Crossing. Uh, this year, Tim Gay and his wife Tony were, were head of that, chairs of that. So I'd like to publicly thank you for a job well done. Let me give you some of the figures. There were 266 utility representatives at that walk, 159 of them were OPPD, about 60%. <coughs> raised $130,000 that goes into the Energy Assistance Fund. So thanks and well done for everybody that was participating in that. I know our, our, uh, the lo all of our team here at OPPD helped get that and pulled across the line. Thanks for the nice weather, too. Yeah. That yeah. was the nicest day we've yeah, ever had 50, for Walk yeah. for Warmth. It's, 50, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's freezing. Yeah. It walk for Heat had a new meaning. It was pretty warm. Though. It was warm. It was great. It actually walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we, well, we, well, we, I'm yeah, employed. I don't. My wife two, other, uh, two other outreach items, uh, and these had to do with education. Uh, the Society of Engineers, again, reached out to high school students that may be interested in engineering and hosted them here. I uh, gave them a look at what we do as a business and what their future may be. And it's never too early to start thinking about what a career may be. So we had 95th graders here from Field Club Elementary School on a field trip here March 3rd and 4th to learn about our business and how we do it and to encourage them to look uh, at technical careers going forward. Many of the people at our company participated in that, and it was very, very successful. Probably one of the big adders was we did have a pizza lunch in the atrium uh, at the end of their tour. So they had to stick through all that to get the pizza. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. Make some comments? Yep. Uh, just just uh, so you all know, we had an audit subcommittee meeting this morning. The audit was very good. The annual report will be printed and sent out and will be online, Edward, in a week or online next week next week by the end of the month in print version anyway a lot of hard work went into the auditing of our, of our was very clean if you want to see it well i think did everyone get a copy the rest of the board not members. yet no. you'll be getting one it just it's out. great information to <clears throat> take These a look are at external auditors not external, external auditors. auditors deloitte two ship and um very good so very comforting to to know that so I wanted to put that information, in. Information, thank you for adding that. That's hot off the press. It's hot off the press. You can see it online. <laughs> and then on, uh, on the other thing, too, Gary, you mentioned that walk for warmth and run. Boy, the, I just got to say the OPBD crew and, and other utilities as well, but we should be very proud of them. They do a lot of good work and a lot of participation from OPPD, so that's very proud to, to see that. So thank you all for doing that, and it's a nice honor to be asked. My mm -hmm. wife did run it, by the yeah. way. I, yeah, I, as I a matter of fact, in, there, yeah, Tony did a yeah, great job. Anyway, yeah. That's all I had. <laughs> okay, any other comments from directors? Do we have any other comments for other business other than what we've talked about this morning? John Pollock, 1412 North 35th Street. Well, we're uh, getting into the... Uh, Winter to spring transition, the temperature uh, feels more like spring, but the uh, circulation pattern, we're still left over with the winter. We've been uh, in a situation with uh, a weak El Nino, and El Nino is associated often with uh, split jet streams, 
Right now we've got a strong jet stream uh, that's running across near the Canadian border and dives into the Great Lakes, and a weak southern jet stream, which is keeping most of the moisture out of our area and across the southern plains into the uh, east coast area. Uh, that situation will probably continue the next couple of weeks with uh, a minimal chance of severe weather for our area up through then. Uh, after that transition, it's anybody's guess. Uh, I checked the uh, latest uh, uh, Climate Prediction Center uh, long-range outlooks this morning before coming here, and they basically call for uh, equal chances above and below temperature and precipitation, which means clueless. Uh, <laughs> we don't have any good... Not as meteorologists. Any good indications to go on. Uh, Last year, of course, we started out with a uh, dry spring and turned uh, rather wet for the late spring and summer, but with, without an exceptional amount of severe weather. Uh, another factor in this uh, pattern that we have been having is reduced flow in the Missouri River because uh, the northern Rockies have been pretty dry. We've essentially melted off the snow in the flatlands all the way up through the basin, and what's left is a reduced snowpack in the uh, northern Rockies. So until the spring rains come, we're not going to be seeing a lot of flow this year. And uh, it, it'll just depend the next few months uh, whether we get wet and green up the way we did last year. If we go into a drought, then uh, the temperature outlook also changes to above normal temperatures. Thank you very much, Mr. Pollock. Thanks, John. You're saying don't get rid of my crop insurance, then, right? Don't get rid of that Double crop warming. insurance. Oh, no. Uh, With global we, warming, you don't get rid of the crop insurance. Even, even though we had an average severe weather season last year, it was well above average on hail. So uh, we, fewer tornadoes than usual and actually windstorms probably, but that hail was pretty bad. Thanks, John. Well, it looks like everybody agrees with us today. Oh. There's no other comments. Uh, thank you very much for coming.